all in. Hello, General Mario here, bringing you my review of Poker Night at the Inventory. It was developed by Telltale Games, released on Steam on November 22nd, 2010. Poker Night at the Inventory is by its title, a single-player poker simulator, more specifically designed to be based on No Limit Texas Hold'em. Now there are a lot of poker simulators out there, but I find this particular simulator has a lot more personality than others. The game takes place in the fictional locale known as The Inventory, a place where games can be played in secret in case they are outlawed. It also happens to be a place where various video game characters can come together and play some cards. In this case, Max from Sam and Max, Strong Bad from Homestar Runner, The Heavy from Team Fortress 2, and Tycho from Penny Arcade. Reginald Von Winslow from Tales of Monkey Island is the host of the game and narrates during gameplay. For those unaccustomed to No Limit Texas Hold'em, here's a quick rundown. Every player is dealt two cards. Then each player can either raise, call, or check, depending on who is the big blind and the small blind. Blinds are a certain amount of chips players have to put in to start the pot, which is the amount of chips any players can win during a round of play. Chips are basically a stand-in for currency. The player with the big blind has to put in a specified amount of chips and is automatically in for the current play, while the small blind is in for half the big blind amount, so the small blind must put in more chips in order to play. Everyone else must either call, putting in the same amount of chips as the big blind, fold, meaning the player sits out until the cards are dealt for the next round, bet, meaning a player throws more chips in, and the other players have to match that amount, or other players can raise, meaning that everyone must match that player who raised, including the player who originally bet. If no one else wants to bet or raise after a bet, and the blinds are met, the player with the big blind can check, passively allowing the game to continue. Three cards are dealt to the middle of play, known as the flop. Every player has the same options as before, except now everyone can check, so that no betting occurs. One more card is dealt known as the turn, and the same process as before occurs, with options of players betting, checking, or folding. The final card is dealt, known as the river, and players still have the same options available. After everyone has made their decisions, then each player shows their two cards. The player with the best combination of their two cards and the five cards in the middle wins the pot. If the other players still have chips, then another round starts until one player is left, and thus wins the tournament. As for the different card combinations, it's a good idea to Google a list so that way you can learn and memorize them. Half of the game is luck, and the other half is definitely skill. With this being a video game, it's harder to tell if one of the characters is bluffing or if they actually have good cards. Though the more you play, the more you begin to understand some of the characters' functions. For example, Tycho is conservative unless he has a strong hand. As for the controls, they're pretty simple. You only control the game with just your PC mouse. There are specific buttons during play that give you different available options, such as calling, raising, betting, and folding. Settings-wise for the game, you have options for adjusting voices, music, and sounds. You can change the difficulty, change how much the characters interact with one another, censor the strong language, turn subtitles on and off, and while not in depth, the graphic settings are okay with anti-aliasing, shadow quality, effects, and different resolution settings available. The biggest reason I've enjoyed this game compared to other Texas Hold'em simulations is the personality that each character brings into the game. Each character stays true to themselves, and when they interact, it is quite funny. It makes it feel as if you really might be sitting at a poker table with these guys. Thus, to me, it does give a nice laid-back atmosphere while still providing tense moments. And the best part of it all is, it's just virtual money you're playing for. So win or lose, it's just about having fun with the game and being able to witness the interactions between the characters. There is, however, a flaw to this as characters do tend to repeat their lines, which I can understand, as there's only so much dialogue that can be recorded for each character. But I feel like this can be a big deal breaker for quite a lot of people. So really the option of turning conversation frequency down may help you out if repeating lines get annoying for you. The selection of characters was weird to me at first, as I only previously knew the heavy from Team Fortress 2 and Strong Bad from his point-and-click game series Strong Bad's Cool Game for Attractive People, also created by Telltale Games. 
Really though, after playing Poker Night at the Inventory, my interest in each of the Represented Characters series has heightened. As I said before, this is a single player game, so there is no multiplayer. So you can't play with your friends, which is a bit of a bummer. But as for the replayability part, from the competitive nature of the game, or the relaxing nature, or both, depending on where you fall on the spectrum, there are some unlockables, including new sets of cards and different felts for the table. At certain times when you start a tournament, you will have a chance to win a special collectible from any one of the characters playing. You have to be the one to knock them out of the tournament in order to obtain their collectible, which is easier said than done. If you manage to pull it off, though, you will not only have it recorded in your stats menu, but the items will be associated with your Steam account, unlocking them in Team Fortress 2 as well. With the stats menu, the game keeps track of various things, including various percentages, the number of players you've knocked out, how many tournaments you've won, etc., and assigns a poker name to you. There is further incentive to keep playing to get better names. Poker Night is fun if you enjoy playing cards and is good for people who are looking for a relaxing, got nothing to lose type of game, while still being for more competitive people out there trying to get better stats. For me, the atmosphere is what makes the game worth playing. But if that's not appealing to you, there are a lot of other poker games out there, especially if you want to play poker with real people online. My cards definitely lie on the table with Poker Night at the inventory. This is General Mario. Bad wins the head. See you later. Ah, what again? Man, I really hope this is all being recorded for a VHS box set.